Continuing where we left off. Uh, with the YCJA, we're going to look at some of the advocacy groups, right? So again, remember, the YCJA is not just about punishing people. It is about rehabilitating them, reintegrating them, and helping them to solve their problems. Boys, what are you staring at? Let's start doing the note stuff. Okay. So advocacy is working on behalf of an idea, a policy, a group of people, a person. You're advocating for that person. So I have a student in grade 12 who wants me to uh, write them a recommendation letter for a, what is it called, scholarship. I've, that is me advocating for that student. Okay. And we're going to look at some of the advocacy groups that your curriculum wants you to study that speak on behalf of young offenders. As a citizen, you can also advocate for any issue you feel strongly about. You can create a lobby group. We looked at some in the first chapter. You can write a letter to your MLA, your members of parliament, whoever it is in government, right? And whatever the topic is, right? You can make a YouTube channel. You can make an ad campaign, whatever it is, right? You can advocate at your own level at anything, okay? Good with this slide? So the John Howard Society, so the John Howard Society was an 18th century, sorry, sorry, John Howard was an English nobleman. He lived in the 18th century, that's in the year 1700. A little bit of history on him. He was captured by the French and he spent five years in a like a dungeon-esque prison. Like, you know, they basically put him underground and put him in a probably a rat infested, crappy place. And uh, that, he spent five years there, right? Not like prisons in Canada. Prisons in Canada are very cushy, you know, they're very comfy. Okay, I have friends who work in the prison system. Uh, it's guards, not criminals. <laughs> he was traded in a prisoner exchange and afterwards became sheriff of Bedford another area one of his duties was to inspect prisons which was a neglected task so you know back in the 1700s if you committed a crime they really didn't care about you you were probably lucky that they didn't execute you but you're probably unlucky in that they put you into prison they just stopped caring about you shocked by what he saw he dedicated his life to improving the living conditions in prisons which is quite interesting you know should we have good quality living conditions for people who break crimes Break laws, right? Particularly serious offenses. You know, if you murder someone, should you get a nice, comfortable prison? Or should we do what they did in Russia back in the day? Send you to the gulag, put you in a work camp. You know, give you a pickaxe. You're like in a mine with a pickaxe. You ever seen the movie Ants? Sure, maybe we could do that. Prison fights, yeah. Who knows, right? Should we humanely and ethically treat people who break laws? Some of you are shaking your head yes. Some of you are shaking your head no. I'm actually curious to hear, you know, what are your reasons? Your answer intrigues me. Why not? Like, did you murder someone? Like, you took away the right to live, so you should die. Probably, you know, you kill them. That's, that's very fair logic, right? I mean, I just, I was talking to some of you in a religion class. That's uh, the Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible, right? An eye for an eye, right? If you kill someone, you should die as well. Or maybe the person who you offended against can decide what your punishment is. So maybe you need to pay ten thousand dollars, whatever they decide, right? Okay, then that's pretty. That's you know to an extent that's reasonable, right? If you stole something, then you owe that money. If you killed someone, then eye for an eye, right? Whatever you did to them, they do to you. It's not unreasonable. And so actually, the, in terms of the religious context, like. So the Old Testament Hebrew Bible is more eye for an eye, right? Like if I slap you, you get to slap me back, right? When Jesus came along in the New Testament, the teachings changed more to a turn the other cheek, a forgiveness and love methodology, right? Which has its benefit as well. Right? Does anyone else think, no, we shouldn't treat them well? You don't want to discuss that? Yes, we shouldn't treat them well because if you treat them well, they're probably going to do it again. That's reasonable, right? If you give them a real nice, comfortable prison, you give them Wi-Fi, TV, internet access, good nutritious meals, are they really being punished? No. You know, are they really 
facing a consequence for their actions. Other than the fact that they can't just leave the prison, right? Unless they break out, but then they're still a prisoner, right? Yeah? Take time out. Do you have your hand up? What's up? Um, I think that they should have not get good recognition because they knew that the crime they were doing was like they could go to jail for it and they still did it. So. Yeah, you know, especially if you're an adult. It's like most adults, when they're doing illegal activities, know they're illegal. Like you can see in Breaking Bad. Right, like Walter White knows he's committing a crime. He knows he's doing something illegal. Why was he doing it? He says very clearly, because he enjoys it, right? And so why should he be treated well if he's in a prison? Very fair. Uh, a couple of you shook your head. Yes, we should treat them well. I want to hear that side as well. You know, why, why is that? You shook your head, yes. Oh. Nobody thinks we should treat prisoners well? No. Well, why? Yeah, okay, over here. Ah, yeah, to rehabilitate them, make them into better people. If you commit a crime, grade nines, are you still a human being? Yes. And are humans worthy of being treated as human beings? Yes. Are people redeemable? Um, you know what that word means? Most of the time. It depends. Most of the time depends on the person. Let's hear it. Why does it depend on the person? Well, because, like, if you're, like, really mentally not okay, there's probably not a good chance you're going to come back. Okay, and mentally not okay could be, let's say you just had a very rough child. Actually, maybe I shouldn't say this on camera. There's a really interesting book I've tried to get a hold of. It's called Panzram. It's this particular criminal individual. He had a very rough childhood, this guy. And uh, he was considered the most violent criminal. He had murdered 300 people that, that they knew of. He, like his, his, his name was associated with that. Amongst other things that, you know, rhyme with grape. And, uh, you know, he, he really... His particular mental issue is that he, he had a very horrible father, and so he wanted to act out this vengeful spirit, this punishment on as many men as he could, so he murdered a lot of men and he, and he raped a lot of men, right? And so, and this guy, in his book, he writes that nothing you do will change me. Like, I am this man. If you let me free, I will kill again. You know, and so the mental state of a person really matters on if they can be redeemed, right? Over here, you said you people, most people are redeemable. Why is that? because it's usually not the person uh, themselves that is causing it. It's more on how other people affect them as a person. Interesting. So you, you think that external, outside events cause them to commit these crimes. I wouldn't necessarily say I agree, but I do think that the external events can be taken care of. Right? We, we can deal with that. But there is a lot of validity to that, right? Like if someone is very poor and they can't get a job, how do you think they'll earn money to pay for food and a house? You know, maybe they'll end up doing illegal things. You, you've been waiting for a while as well. Did you want to add? Uh, no, Carter said a lot. Okay. okay. Um, just a little bit more about John Har Howard Society. So it, came, it began in Canada in 1867 from a group of church workers who desired to bring spiritual help to prisoners. In 1929, it evolved into a group which was focused on helping prisoners once they were released, giving them housing, clothing, and employment. It became the John Howard Society in 1946. Nowadays, they also work to reform laws and the criminal justice process. Okay, so maybe some laws are a little unfair. Maybe the process isn't as, as forgiving to people who come from a very difficult, difficult background. Maybe the punishment, the consequence, isn't actually aimed towards helping the person. Right, maybe it's just to punishing them and I don't know maybe sometimes you need to punish a person but you know I, I don't necessarily know if I'm the person qualified to make that choice of whether or not you should be punished I don't know who is on that on that note but as a society we can make that decision the Elizabeth Fry Society a bit of a background on them so Elizabeth Fry was born in the 18th century to a wealthy Quaker family uh, for the record, Quakers, they're, they're a group of people, they believe in equality, therefore she was able to be an advocate, right? So at this time, so in the, this would be again the 1700s, because she was in a community that believed in equality, she, she, it's important to note her as a woman, she was allowed to advocate and speak for herself on her beliefs. On an educational trip to a prison in London, she was appalled by the way women and children were treated. So, you know, Education is put into quotation marks. The reason being, you know, most likely they took uh, girls from well-off families. They walked them through a prison and showed them this is what happens if you 
you know, I don't know, things back then, <laughs> like if you engage in premarital sex, if you, uh, you know, commit crimes, if you go down this path, if you, you know, take drugs or whatever, you know, and anyone ever seen the show called Beyond, like, Scared Straight or Beyond Scared Straight? Yeah. Some of us who, who's, yeah. What do they do on that show? They scare the kids. Right, where? Where do they scare them? In the prison. They so they take a bunch of kids, and, and I don't know the background of this show, but they take a bunch of kids to a prison and they get these prisoners to scare them. And it's not just like random good kids who are getting good grades and doing well. They take the kids who are kind of starting to act and misbehave, right? Um, so additionally, so what, so, so what she saw in the prisons, uh, women were frequently kept with male prisoners. Maybe a little bit of a conflict of interest and often kept as borderline sex slaves for the jailers. Which is horrible, right? That was their treatment. Uh, many babies were born to inmate mothers due to tough prison conditions. Prostitution was rampant. So the women who were put into prison, you know, 100, 200 years ago, had really horrible conditions placed onto them. And think about it, if you're in prison for a year and you have a baby, that means that somebody likely raped you or, you know, maybe through prostitution that child was born. And so Elizabeth Fry went on to provide women and children with the encouragement to care for themselves and their children. She convinced authorities to set up schools and education within prisons, provided knitting material and a market to sell to, and insisted upon separating male and female prisoners and that women supervise women, right? She was ensuring that these women don't, aren't taken advantage of, which is a very noble thing to do, right? Like just because you commit a crime doesn't mean that, you know, you're not human, that you're not worthy of being treated fairly as a human being. On the note of sentencing, sentencing circle, so a sentencing circle is something that comes from Aboriginal and Indigenous uh, backgrounds of how to deal with problems, how to rehabilitate, how to resolve these issues in communities. And for those of you who read Spirit Bear, which was like three of you, um, the goal of this of this process is to put this individual through something very difficult or challenging as determined by the community, as far as I understand, based on this book, and to then allow that person to rehabilitate their relationship, not only with themselves, with nature, and with their community, right? And so maybe the spirit of this justice process is very different, right? The idea is that the person has some sort of issue between themselves and the natural order of things. We, we particularly see that in the novel Spirit Bear. The elder in that situation is very adamant. He tells Cole Matthews, you know, you need to observe these animals and, and observe the way nature flows and you, that will help you to solve your problems with yourself internally. And once you do that, you'll be able to connect better with the people in your community. Committees act on the idea that breaking a law harms everyone in a community and that the community must become involved in solutions, right? So again, so particularly like that, you guys mentioned that somebody burned down a rink here. So let's say that was someone in the community. Their action harmed the community. And so a process where the community comes together and figures out how do we rehabilitate this individual? How do we reintegrate this event and this individual back into our societies, right? And obviously elders, elder members of the community play an important role in making those decisions. You know, particularly if you've been living a tough life, there, there's a degree of wisdom that comes with having lived for 60, 70, 80 years. That maybe isn't always valued as much in, in, in our culture, right? Like how many of you really hang out with your grandparents? I don't. My grandma's really old. I think she's like above 90 now. It's kind of hard to communicate, but you know, taking uh, wisdom and taking lessons from your elders, from people older than you. There's not a lot of coaching and mentoring done in our society, which is unfortunate because you can learn a lot from someone who's you know 10 to 20 30 years older than you and i'm talking about practical life things not just like classroom stuff right? you're looking like shocked like oh i didn't know that okay. okay that wraps up that i'm gonna end this video right before the 15 minute mark